Hi, so I've just had a mini gastric bypass, as you may know. These are 10 things I wish I had known before having the gastric bypass. Taste. Some, for some reason, my taste buds are super sensitive. I can taste more flavors, less, less food, a lot, but I can taste more. Sandwich spreads are strong tasting. Things that I would have added salt to before, I now don't need salt. I, things just taste stronger. Um, and I crave savory things. I, I'm, I'm completely off chocolate. I used to eat a lot of chocolate, and now I'm not. I used to eat, I used to like chocolate, I eat quite a bit, and now I'm not interested in chocolate at all. I've had a few pieces, it's fine. Too sweet, which is really odd. Um, so yeah, my taste seems to be in overdrive. I want to taste things. And also, I found that, now, because I can hardly eat anything, I want to make sure that what I can eat, I really, really like. I've become, super fussy with food very very quickly so um, that's probably going to end up costing more or maybe it won't because now cheap food will taste good too i don't know but i certainly have much stronger taste that was a, that was a surprise hunger i am not hungry at all i'm i'm somebody that could eat a large takeout a big plate of food and eat it all to put it into context last night i, I went crazy and had uh, about a saucer full of food not even a saucer the the cup bit at the bottom of a saucer and i was stuffed i could not finish it i was so full which is amazing because i um i had a gastric band prior to this and uh, i hated it it didn't work for me it never made me feel full or satisfied in any way it just made me feel comfortable the bypass makes me feel full but yeah, I don't feel anything. I just, I'm just not hungry. That wasn't so much unexpected, but I was f frightened that that wouldn't be the case after the band didn't do that for me whatsoever. So hunger and lack of it. Gas. I am so windy and bloaty and party and burpy. More than with the band. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely take deflatine and things because I feel swollen a lot. And that's really bizarre and grossly satisfying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so gassy. And in fact, for a little while, I couldn't tell. I was worried because I've got a new small stomach and my old stomach is now sort of disconnected. And I thought I was, I thought that, I thought that stomach was hungry. And then I passed gas and it wasn't hungry anymore. So that's really such an odd feeling just to be bloated all the time. So I'm so gassy, much, much gassier and bloaty feeling than I thought. Although it does pass after a few days to a week out of surgery. So yeah, lots of gas from both ends. The pain. Now this is something they do not tell you on the brochure, but the first 24 hours after surgery, that shit makes you want to reevaluate your life. I have never been in so much constant discomfort and there is no relief from it. You can't lie on your side, on your back, certainly not your front. You can't sleep, you can't sit up. You're desperate for something to drink. Not really hungry, but everything is dry. You can't, you're so thirsty. It is the worst thing. It passes. And just remember that if you're having this procedure, how you feel just after that procedure for that first 24 hours, it goes away. But at the time, I thought if I'd known this, I would not have had that procedure. I would now, <laughs> because it does end. But for that, there's a few, there's a, especially that first night when you cannot sleep and you're so tired and there's no relief. That's vile and very painful and sore. So that was unexpected and unpleasant. Weight loss. Well, that might seem like an odd one to have as a things I wish I didn't, things that I didn't know. What I didn't know is how immediate the first weight loss is. I'm about a stone and a half down than I was a week ago, just from the surgery. And it's continuing. It's a pound or two a day. <laughs> It's insane. The weight falls off so fast. It's probably too much. I might actually up my calories with some protein shakes a bit more uh, because I don't want to. I don't want to feel tired. But 
yeah, I, I know I know this this surgery, the mini back mini gastric bypass is the is the the gold standard. It's the best procedure you can have. I didn't think it was going to be this good. It is so fast, which is awesome. My tolerance of food. I was expecting to hardly be able to eat anything, to literally be on shakes and nothing else, liquid only. That's what I was expecting and that's what I've read about. However, if you can tolerate it, you can be a little more flexible than that. As long as you're aware that it has to be, whatever you eat has to be a very smooth, pasty consistency. Um, before you swallow it. So chew, 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 chew. I've had, you know, crackers and paste and all kinds of yogurts. Um, even some chicken, very, very, very finely cut at first and then chew it a lot. And it's been fine. I even had some chocolate and I can, I've heard of people not able to look at chocolate without feeling ill. Don't get, don't get me wrong, I didn't like it much. But I felt fine. My food tolerance is amazing. Nothing has I'm almost at that stage now where I'm getting a little bit reckless and I want to start going, oh, I'll try anything, give me a burger. I want, I want to eat a bite of it, but, uh, and that's still hard. In my head, I can still eat massive amounts of food until I take a, like, like a, a, a spoonful of it and I'm full, game over. The other thing that I found is that the change in how I eat. I used to be a really bad grazer. If there was food next to me, very quickly, there wouldn't be food next to me. I would eat it all. I would pick away, even if I wasn't particularly hungry, I would just pick at it until it was gone. I no longer want to do that. I'll just throw it away. I am done very, very quickly. I can tolerate almost anything so far, but not much of it. Tiny portions, not even starter sized portions, and I'm full. I think the day before yesterday, I only managed 300 calories in the entire day, and that was with a protein shake. I, I, I understand that gets a little higher as the swelling in the, the pouch goes down, but it's amazing. It's amazing to have, to be satisfied with such a small amount of food. I love the fact, and it's easy to add calories. You can get, you know, delicious protein shakes and, you know, the weightlifting industry is full of easy ways to get healthy pharmaceutical level, you know, protein powders and nutritional meal replacement. So that's fine. It's awesome. Tolerance of people. <laughs> now, why my tolerance of food is terrific, I really don't like people at the moment. No, this is not directly to do with, with the procedure, but when I'm in pain, oh, ho, ho, leave me alone. I even told my friends not to come to the hospital. I did not want to see anyone. And there was a girl staying with me and she was lovely and her family were lovely, but I wanted to be alone. I was just, leave me some peace. When I went to, um, the day after the procedure, I had to go for this barium, barium, like a, like a radioactive drink. Um, no, Unfortunately, it doesn't give you like spider powers or anything. It, it, they, they run an x-ray to make sure that, that all your fluids go to the right place. Yeah, so you have to drink this radioactive drink and it, they, they, they x-ray it as it goes through your things uh, to make sure that everything's in place. However, because I was so thirsty and I had to have this done before I was allowed to have anything to drink, I was in a bad mood and I was in pain and I hadn't slept and I was feeling murderous. And I was in this corridor waiting for the guy to come and do the barium thing. And then I started to dry gag because my mouth was dry and it was irritating my tonsils <laughs> at the back of my throat. And I started to dry gag and I was in so much pain. And, and, then, and then I said, look, I, I said to the trying to say to explain to the guy, I need this little spongy thing so you can wet your mouth and at least you can, you know, get rid of the, the dryness. And he just wasn't, he was just not interested. And he was saying, oh, I have to go back to the ward, we'll send for you later. And I saw the huge queue behind me, I'd been there for ages already. I was like, no, do it now. But then I couldn't do it now because I was coughing and he couldn't do the procedure if I didn't stop coughing. And all I wanted was a small drink. And honestly, I was going to assume my ultimate form and wreck this guy. I was so, I had to pinned him against the wall had I actually been able to stand and I wasn't connected to, to a drip in, in a lot of pain. But I would have. I was in such a foul mood. And generally, all the time, I was in a bad mood and hated everyone. I hated everyone even more than I normally do. So that's, but I thought, and again, not the procedure. <laughs> you just, you want to be left alone so badly. And when you have people, you have people fussing over you. Yeah, I became very intolerant of people and snappy and rude. Sleep. I'm not sleeping anymore. Two or three hours and I'm wide awake. I don't know whether that's because I'm such a low amount of calories or I don't know. But I'm hardly sleeping. Um, I'm going back to how I was years ago. I don't like it. I'm gonna go on to sleep. 
I'm tired. Again, it's probably to do with the fact that my, my nutrition is all over the place at the moment, even though I'm taking vitamin pills and trying to keep the calories up. It'll probably take a few days. But I didn't expect that. And I was back in work um, within a few days of being released. I, in, if I was doing this again, I would book a full week off work after the procedure just to have some, some proper rest because you don't get your sleeping pattern back properly for a while. And that's and I'm really struggling with that. That's something I didn't know and I wish I had known and I'd have booked more time off. I like to get get me off the painkillers, get me off, I wanna, I don't wanna, I wanna walk to the toilet and you know, I'm quite get on with things. But that one thing I wish I had done is taking some more time off work. Energy levels. My energy levels are kind of low. It's kind, I don't know whether it's the sleep related or it's all tied in together. Went to the gym this morning. I didn't have a lot in the tank. I managed to get to a jog, my usual pace. Really not for long though. I'm so underfueled with nutrition and of course my body's healing after fairly major surgery. I mean, I've been rewired. So my energy levels are low. And I didn't expect to feel that low. However, from what I've read online, I have fared a lot better than many other people have. And that's because for the year up to that procedure, I've been training hard in the gym. I've been pushing myself as hard as I possibly can. For my weight, I'm actually quite fit. That's not as mean I am fit, but relatively for my weight. And that has been such a help. Um, on the very first night, for example, I didn't use a bedpan. I walked to the bathroom, shuffled slowly, whimpering to the bathroom, but I did. And every time I woke up, I was trying to sit up and do some little crunches just to get my muscles re-engaged and get things moving again. But I'm still drained. My energy level's very low. So that's something I'd forgotten about, to be honest. I kind of took for granted, and in, in hindsight, I'd have been more prepared for that. Red Bull. Now, I like Red Bull, okay? Everyone else in the world seems to say, Red Bull, you can't drink Red Bull. Red Bull's not good for you. It's fine. Okay, it isn't good for you, but it's not bad for you. All the nonsense about artificial sweetness and things. There isn't, seriously, don't, shut up. There is no science to back that up. You're just regurgitating somebody else's myth. Okay, just a second. However, I was fairly... A, fizzy drinks are generally a no-no after bariatric surgery because of the gas can expand things. And also, you know what doctors are like, they're really picky and fussy. And they're like, you must not do the things. But I, I, want, I want to do the things. And they're like, no, you must stop the things. You know what doctors are like. So, Red Bull. Now, I, <laughs> nonetheless, and I'm really bad at this. If somebody tells me these are the rules, I will see how many I can break. It's just, I just do. So naturally, as soon as I came out of hospital, I had a Red Bull. And I, look, look, don't get me wrong, I was very sensible. It took me four hours to drink it. I was tiny little sips. I even let it, leave it left it open for a while to let all the gas, it was a flat Red Bull, okay? But I craved it so badly. And that night, when my surgeon came to see me to check out how I was, because they come to the hotel, it's an amazing clinic, by the way. <laughs> he was like, are you, are, you, are you drinking Red Bull already? I was like, oh, you know, there's a lot of sugar in Red Bull. I said, oh, no, no, it's sugar free. And I, you know, and I, I Something like 15, 20 calories or something, and I sip at it, you know, and he says, okay, good. I, was like, <laughs> I didn't expect good, I'll be honest. He said, good, because one of the hardest vitamins for you to get now that you're out of, out of out with this procedure is vitamin B and B12 and B6, or one of the Bs. And Red Bull's got loads of vitamin B in it. So if you just be sensible, let it go flat, and, but if you sip that, you won't need to have those vitamin B injections. A medical person giving me the okay for Red Bull. Good times. So all these people for years have been telling me, Red Bull, no, you've got to stop Red Bull. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and also, uh, straws. Put a straw in your drink, drink from the bottom, you won't get air. I've read on some websites that say you can't use a straw with because there's a chance of getting air in. I don't really know how that works, and it's like a little bit at the bottom. Don't do that, obviously. Oh, that was such good news. I mean, <laughs> here's the other thing, though. I used to drink about eight a day, which is a bit too much, to be honest. There's a lot of vitamin B in eight cans of Red Bull a day. Now about two or three, I just sip at them because I get caffeine, which keeps me alert, which I need because my energy is low and the calories are low. But vitamin B, so it'll keep my energy levels up. My hair probably won't fall out. And that's a plus. I paid a lot for this hair. So good times. So there you go. That is the 10 things I wish I had known before I had bariatric surgery. If you've got any things that you can add to the list, please add them below. Below. And um, subscribe, comment, and all the things and thank you so much for watching please we've got if you've got a long journey ahead although based on the current weight loss possibly not as long as i thought hey join in add your experiences ask questions anything you like is absolutely fine thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i shall see you all in the next video bye
Bye.